Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the On the Pony Express podcast. I am Billy Embody. Thanks for listening. We've got our final spring position preview podcast to go as uh, dropping this one just on the eve of spring practice beginning for us. Thursday morning, we'll be out to watch the Mustangs for about 20 minutes, Thursday and Friday, before getting access to a full practice on Saturday, as well as media availability with Rhett Lashley and SMU players. Let's jump in. The wide receivers, tight ends, we're going to lead off with the tight end group. It's relatively short and sweet in a way. SMU returns RJ Maryland, who had an, a freshman All-American type season at tight end for the Mustangs. Uh, coming in from South Lake Carroll over the summer, he earned his way uh, to that playing time uh, and really took off in that true freshman season. And for him, you know, playing alongside Ben Redding, who eventually emerged and, and caught a few touchdown passes and really became, you know, a feel-good story for his final season before that injury, uh, RJ was able to really, um, you know, see what it took um, to be, you know, a, um, a, a, a college football player. He came in, he was a little thin, he packed on the weight, he comes into spring listed at 6'4", 217, uh, he ended up making six starts in 13 games, 200, 296 yards and six touchdowns on 28 receptions. That touchdown total was the second most in a single season for an SMU tight end. So that was quite the entrance uh, for uh, RJ Maryland to SMU. He comes back now, clearly, I think, um, as the top tight end in the AAC. And uh, in terms of SMU schedule, we'll be... Uh, one of, if not, you know, the top tight ends that'll be on the field all season for SMU. Obviously, Oklahoma's got some, TCU has some, but, um, you know, RJ's got that talent and and he looks like a pro. Uh, he proved it very early uh, that he was a great pickup for SMU on National Signing Day out of South Lake Carroll uh, and, and just goes to show, you know, when you're a staff and you're elsewhere and if you keep recruiting and keep pushing, if you end up somewhere else, it can pay off. And it certainly did uh, when he signed with the Mustangs and, he had a phenomenal, um, you know, uh, freshman season. And then you look at the rest of the tight end room now. And this spring, at least, you're you're thinking, okay, who's next? Who's Who can you bring in? You lose Ben Redding. Um, they, they really don't have somebody you can really rely on as an inline blocker right now. So they are looking in the transfer portal. But then uh, it does seem like Gage Haskin, uh, who entered the portal in January, looks like he's going to be back. He's a big body, um, you know, tight end, somebody that can really, um, you know, block. He had his moments where, you know, if you're an SMB fan, I mean, they were critical moments where you drop balls. Um, obviously, he got beat on the block. That result resulted in the pick six against BYU. But it just goes to show he was the guy that was on the field as a blocker. You know, Ben Redding was. RJ Maryland still developing that with, you know, gaining some mass. Uh, but it just goes to show where this room's at. And – you get beyond Gage Haskin, and it's a big spring for somebody like Cam Cam Allen, who came in, you know, didn't do a whole lot uh, after redshirting at Michigan State, entering his second season. You know, he's somebody that I, I feel like SMU really needs to see turn the corner. He played in just two games last year. Um, if not, you know, it just makes the the need for a tight end uh, from the transfer portal even bigger. You have Nolan Matthews Harris, who has shown traits of being productive and being, you know, a contributor, but just hasn't been able to stay healthy. If he can finally be healthy and contribute as a blocker, we saw that in spurts uh, when he was available this year, that'll be big. So I'm looking to see how he looks coming back off of an injury plague season. And then Simon Gonzalez comes back, uh, quite frankly, hasn't done anything uh, since he transferred to SMU from Texas Tech. He also hasn't been able to stay healthy. Uh, so it's a tight end room that you just – has one really, really, really good player and then a bunch of unknowns because they either can't stay healthy or have, um, you know, not been able to produce when it's needed for SMU. Now, on the flip side of things, before Trip Reardon and Adam Moore get here this summer, Lonnie Johnson from Fort Worth, Timber Creek, did enroll early on the Hilltop. So he'll get a chance to get his feet wet in college football, uh, at least, you know, in practice. He's listed at uh, 6'3", 205, he's bigger than R.J. Maryland was coming into SMU, 
and he's an early enrollee. I think if you're looking for a dark dark horse contributor this season, I would circle Lonnie Johnson. He's a big, big kid. He's got those receiver traits that SMU loves in their tight ends. Um, and he's also just a really hard worker, working good kid. Uh, he lost a lot of his senior season due to an AC joint injury. They ended up sitting it out. Um, and now he's healthy and ready to go. So I'm intrigued by Lonnie Johnson. I think he could be one of the steals in this class uh, that's not talked about enough, at least going in. But uh, he's obviously a true freshman. He's going to have to prove his worth out there on the practice field um, and and then you know see where it goes from there. So the tight end room, uh, I think it's fairly straightforward. You look at RJ Maryland. He's one of your star players or budding stars, I would say, in this offense. Uh, and And looks like he could even be a, a three and done type player. I mean, just being honest with his upside and what he's done so far, very few tight ends produce like that as true freshmen. So um, SMU has got a good one for the future and uh, you got to keep him uh, safe and healthy this spring for sure. We move into the wide receivers, a very intriguing position group, one that, um, you know, headlined by Romello Brinson and Keyshawn Smith coming in from Miami. Um, and then you have Jordan Curley, Jake Bailey, Moochie Dixon, um, Teddy Knox, Dylan Goffney. Uh, you know, there, there's uh, Roger Daniels in there. This group has a good bit of options before the rest of, you know, the signing class comes in uh, this summer. And, and I think looking at this one, and, you know, I've, I've said this, I, I said this on the early position battles piece that we had at OnThePonyExpress.com. Jordan Curley, Jake Bailey, and Keyshawn Smith are probably viewed as your starters. Jake Bailey was dynamic when he was healthy last year. He was able to contribute at a very high level um, and, and gave SMU some juice out of the slot that they didn't necessarily have. Uh, he had 12 receptions, 205 yards, and a touchdown. You know, played a good bit of football at Rice uh, before making the transfer to SMU. I think he's somebody that you circle as a real breakout, breakout player um, he played against North Texas, Maryland, TCU, and UCF. In that TCU game, he went off. Eight receptions, 163 yards, and that touchdown. And then got hurt and uh, had to miss the rest of the season. I think for SMU, having him back, and and you know, people will tell you, he was very, very close with Preston Stone in terms of building that relationship and chemistry. Um, so for Preston Stone to be entering his first season as, as a starter, to have Jake Bailey, He's got to stay healthy, which he did the first three years of his career. This is a big one for SMU. Uh, Jake Bailey has a chance to be dynamic uh, in this offense, especially when you look at Jordan Curley with his speed factoring, factoring in. I mean, SMU, when Jordan Curley's been on the field, has been a better football team, flat out. Um, played in 10 games last year, seven starts, missed a little bit of time, uh, three games, but uh, 37 receptions for 588 yards and six touchdowns. And uh, that was good. Uh, his totals were good for third on the team in all-purpose yardage. I think Jordan Curley, if he can stay healthy, and that's the disclaimer with this, with this room for the most part, is if they can stay healthy, they're, they've got a chance to have a really strong season. They've got weapons in the passing game. It might not be deep in a way, um, but uh, they do have plenty of options. And that is before we talk about Keyshawn Smith, who is just flat-out fun to watch. Um, last year at Miami – uh, wasn't necessarily what he wanted to put together. I would say a little bit up and down, but played in eight games, three starts, 13 catches for 199 yards and two touchdowns. But he is an explosive kick returner. We talked a little bit about that uh, when we did our Meet All the Newcomers podcast. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, subscribe to our YouTube channel and give that a listen. Well over an hour on all the newcomers. Uh, but he's got that explosiveness. And I think he's right up there in terms of fastest guys on the team especially on offense. Uh, he's just got that juice. And now that he's reunited with Rob Likens, SMU's hoping he catches a little bit of fire opposite of Jordan Curley in this offense. And, you know, those are those are the starters. I, I don't think you're going to see much debate around that. But I will say uh, you have Moochie Dixon coming back, who played in all 13 games quietly. You know, he didn't necessarily do a ton. 28 receptions, though, 378 yards and three touchdowns. He came on a little bit late. Um, in terms of really starting to produce, which I think gives the coaching staff, um, you know, a little bit of, um, you know, positive energy going into the spring. He, he had over 100 yards between the final two games, um, had a little bit of a lull there 
uh, in, in the early goings of, of November, but finished relatively strong. Um, and he had a big game or he had a touchdown against Maryland um, and, and just was kind of, you know, good for two to three receptions game last year. He was kind of settling into playing a little bit more. He didn't really do that at Texas too often in terms of production. Now he's probably your first outside receiver off the bench. If I'm, you know, giving this a look and, and being real as it point as it stands with spring ball. You then look at Romelo Brinson. Tons of talent, four-star prospect out of Miami Northwestern. Hasn't put it all together on the field. Uh, now I think he gets his shot. Uh, again, kind of a change of scenery, maybe a better opportunity. I'm a little bit more conservative with him. I, I think he's somebody you've got to see it uh, to believe it because he hadn't necessarily done it against big opponents at Miami. Um, a lot of it was kind of against uh, some smaller schools and things like that. So, uh, But he is a big body receiver, which SMU needed out of the portal, and they got him in Romelo Brinson right before the semester started. Um, Dylan Goffney, he's kind of the question mark. You know, he got injured at the end of the season. Will he be able to go during spring ball? We'll get that question answered very quickly um, when we get out on the field to watch them. But he's somebody that has done a, a little bit of everything. He's played outside. He's played in the slot. Uh, he's played behind Rishi Rice here and there, um, but ended up starting four games last year. 18 receptions, 369 yards and two touchdowns. I think Dylan Goffney is a guy that doesn't necessarily flash when you watch him out there, but he just seems steady. And I think that's the the key to Dylan Goffney and what he can bring to the table is that steadiness to him, uh, to his game. And for me, I'm looking for him to break out. He's played two years of, of college football now. You want to see him take that next step in that development. And if he's able to do that, uh, that really unlocks a lot of depth for this wide receiver room. So I'm excited to see what Dylan Goffney brings to the table in spring if he's healthy. And, uh, you know, you watch him out there continue to develop. Maybe this is the year that it really all comes together for him. He's, he's kind of played – he's been more of a role player early in his career. But it seems like yesterday he enrolled early um, from Cypress Bridgeland and, uh, you know, jumped into the offense and, and played a good bit as a true freshman. Teddy Knox is a, kind of a mystery. You know, he got some jet sweeps. He's got plenty of speed, but he needs to develop a little bit more maturity and keep putting it together to get a bigger role in this offense. There's no doubt about that. You look at Roderick Daniels and what he did last year after, you know, stepping aside. He says, you know what, I'm going to come back. I think this is a good opportunity for me. And boy, did he make the most of it. Lined up at running back, lined up at slot, scored, did a bunch of things. And um, I think he's somebody that, if he can unlock, again, that potential right behind Jake Bailey, that's exciting. You know, that was the thing with Roderick and that the staff was talking about with him before he opted out initially was, hey, you are the next man up. So maybe don't do that. Don't opt out. And he ended up thinking it was the right move for him. He ends up coming back and now he's still on the roster. It was really one of the good stories. Um, you know, obviously he lost his dad, which is very, very difficult. And that changed things for him behind the scenes. Um, like it would for anyone. But he came back and put in the work and was a model teammate. And I think that's important to note um, when talking about Roderick and, and kind of what he can bring. He's a year older. Um, he is somebody that now you look to, again, as a veteran, um, been on campus going into his third season. And uh, I'm excited to see what he brings to the table and, and how SMU uses him. Because he did get some looks at running back. He did get that slot opportunity. Um, so now he is a true gadget for Rhett Lashley and this staff to play with a little bit. Jackson Lavender comes in. We talked a ton about him on the prior podcast, but again, somebody in the slot who's going to come in and push guys uh, very quickly, at least, you know, with his work ethic, he's been around the team a long time as a recruit. He knows the expectations. He probably knows a good bit of the playbook too. Um, so I'm intrigued to see how Jackson Lav Lavender looks. Um, he's a pure slot and uh, you know, he gets a jump on the guys that are coming in that also might factor into that room, like a Randy Reese, for example. So look, this receiver room is, is um, one that in the spring, I want to see stay healthy. That's number one. Uh, when you look at this room, that's been the biggest, you know, kind of hiccup for the most part for them um, in terms of unlocking their full potential and being able to contribute at a high level as a group. That was what made in part Rasheed Rice so important was that, he had to be the guy because there were guys in and out of the lineup every week, it seemed like. 
they had to go to him. And that was what, you know, helped him, I think, you know, in a way, have the season he did. Now it's going to be a more of a group effort, and these guys have to be reliable. So um, it's going to be uh, key that they stay healthy. Uh, for me, I want to see, you know, continued development from Amuchi Dixon, um, you know, Roger Daniels, uh, Dylan Goffney, if he's healthy. Those are some key guys I'm watching in that room um, to see if they can – you know, take it up a notch. You know, they brought in Keyshawn Smith and Romello Brinson to push. That that shouldn't be lost on those guys. Those guys should be recognizing that and saying, all right, we got to get going now. So I feel like you look at this wide receiver room, there is talent, there is production when healthy, and it's a little bit better of a situation than you might think it is after losing Rasheed Rice and an Austin Upshaw and guys like that. Um, but it's precarious because they have to stay healthy and they haven't necessarily done that. So big spring ahead, developing chemistry with Preston Stone and continuing to build off of, uh, you know, the chemistry they started to build a little bit with Kevin Henry Jennings as well at quarterback. They've got to be ready to roll. Um, this offense uh, has a lot riding on uh, the, the connection between Preston Stone and these wideouts and pass catchers. So uh, developing that chemistry, getting those reps, we know they will. Um, and I, I feel like, you know, when it's all said and done, if they're healthy, I mean, this has a chance to be a pretty explosive group. So it, it, there's really not too much more, el you know, else to say about this group heading into spring. You know, they, they are, uh, for the most part, what they are. They've got to be healthy when it comes to the season. But these are all guys that work extremely hard. Jordan Curley's been in there with the lights off when I've been in the indoor randomly uh, catching balls. Um, you look at some of the other guys out there, they've just pushed each other. And now that there's more competition, they've got to bring it. So spring practice Thursday morning. I'm excited for it. We'll let you guys out of here. We'll have a full reaction podcast Friday as the Mustangs will get off the practice field. And I'll share my initial reaction uh, to how the Mustangs look. Check out at OnThePonyExpress.com our special for spring practice, which starts Thursday morning. So check it out. Sign up if you haven't already. It's a great deal. And, um, you know, we appreciate all you guys who have subscribed to the YouTube channel. Check that for highlights from practice, uh, as well as player and coach interviews when those start up. So appreciate all you guys who listen to this edition, our final one of the Spring Position Preview Podcast. And we will catch you guys after spring ball starts. First practice, real football in a way, back at it. So stay locked in to OnThePonyExpress.com, and we'll catch you again next time. Thanks for listening.